here, Your Majesty, we have an infant phenomenon. A remarkable child of ten. He's quite a historian, editor of our school magazine. Ah, very interesting. This, Your Majesty, is Rupert, our young editor. How do you do, Rupert? How do you do? Sit down. And what's that you're reading? Karl Marx. Surely you're not a communist. Do I have to be a communist to read Karl Marx? Rupert! That's a valid answer. Well, if you're not a communist, what are you? Nothing. Nothing? I dislike all forms of government. But somebody must rule. And I don't like the word rule. Well, if we don't like the word rule, let's call it leadership. Leadership in government is political power, and political power is an official form of antagonizing the people. What magazine did you say he edits? A commentary on current events. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, Ambassador. But, uh, my dear young man, politics are necessary. Politics are rules imposed upon the people. In this country, rules are not imposed. They are the wish of all free citizens. Travel around a bit, then you'll see how free they are. Yes, but you didn't let me finish. They have every man in a straitjacket. And without a passport, he can't move a toe. But if you'll allow me to... In a free world, they violate the natural rights of every citizen. But you don't let me fully... They have become the weapons of political despots. Yes, but may and I... And if you don't think as they think, you're deprived of your passport. Will you allow me to... To leave a country is like breaking out of jail. Yes, and but... And to enter a country is like going through the eye of a needle. But will... Am I free to travel? Of course you're free to travel. Only with a passport. Will you allow me to say something? Only with a passport. Do animals need passports? <laughs> have you finished? It's in Congress that in this atomic age of speed, we are shut in and shut out by passports. If you'll shut up and let somebody else talk... And free speech, does that exist? No, you've got it all. And free enterprise. We were talking of passports. Today, it's all monopoly. All right. Now, will you... Can I go me? into the automobile business and compete with the auto trucks? If I can get in a word... Not a chance. Can I go into the grocery business and compete with the chain stores? Will you shut up? Not a chance. Monopoly is the menace of free enterprise. As I look back 60 years ago... Where were you 60 years ago? He was a glimpse in his great-grandfather's eye. Very well, now. Have you finished? Now, let me say something. Let me tell you how wrong you are. In the first place... <laughs> in the first place... Now I've forgotten what I wanted to say. And the atomic bomb. Ah. It's a crime that when the world cries for atomic energy... You want to make atomic bombs. Me? I'm against atomic bombs. You want to wipe out civilization. Destroy all life on this planet. You don't think you're living in the night. I lost, I lost my throne because I didn't want atomic bombs. You and your kind think that atomic bombs can solve your problems. Listen, you little rat. Today, man has too much power. The Roman Empire collapsed with the assassination of Caesar. And why? If you... Because of too much power. Feudalism blew up with the French Revolution. And why? Right. Because of too much power. And today, the whole world will blow up. And why? Because, because of too much, much power. The monopoly of power is a menace to freedom. It degrades and victimizes every individual. And where is the individual? I don't know. Lost in terror because he's made to hate instead of love. If civilization is to survive, we must combat power until the dignity and peace of man are restored. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, are they quiet? Why are you guys so anti-dictators? Imagine if America was a dictatorship. You could let 1% of the people have all the nation's wealth. You could help your rich friends get richer by cutting their taxes and bailing them out when they gamble and lose. You could ignore the needs of the poor for health care and education. Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could wiretap phones. You could torture foreign prisoners. You could have rigged elections. You could lie about why you go to war. You could fill your prisons with one particular racial group, and no one would complain. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. I know this is hard for you Americans to imagine, but please try.
Welcome, shoppers. Ketchup, mustard, oh, sausages and buns. the gods put our packages together because we belong together it's like we were made for each other get ready boys oh, feels amazing oh yes i'm the first to enter eternity Try. Everyone will die otherwise. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Fuck me, right? I only want to have a bit of crack, but I end up always finding myself in situations where I become a voice of reason. I'm, I shouldn't be. Rather than looking and going, why is the man with the bag making sense? You go, why is the man in the suit not making sense? My uh, generation, we're old enough to remember the Celtic Tiger, but we're, m we're massively affected by the recession. And, do you know, our, our 20s were stolen from us, pretty much. Young Irish people, the suicide amongst them is massive, huge amounts of suicide, jumping into rivers, and emigration, and a lot of young Irish people, they don't see a future. Now, being in the IRA wasn't all flares, orgies, and funny accents. During the War of Independence, the volunteers were organised into flying columns. We used to hang around woods, waiting for tans to shoot. Well, with the rubber bandits, we consider ourselves to be artists. We just use so so social satire. We try, we, we, whatever's happening in society, we, we'll use as inspiration for material. With comedy, or with satire, or with art, or any type of creativity, you can go at it from mad angles. Half the Irish leadership wanted to cancel the rising, so places like Cork, with two and a half thousand volunteers, received nine different orders, each one contradicting the others, before eventually giving all their weapons to the Brits because a priest told them to. Oh, hello, gentlemen. Oh, they're delightful. Oh, I love that. 1916 now. It's a hundred years ago. This is when, you know, we had this massive failed rebellion that led to a, a successful war of independence. That's part of the dichotomy with the 1916 thing is that it's weird to look back at these lads that were our age, these men and women that were our age trying to forge a future. And now we're in a situation where we don't see a future, but we don't even know who our enemy is. Who are we causing an obstruction to? Well, the buses are trying to get past. Because the common law of the land say we can't stand in a row. Or are you talking legislation? Oh, my word. Not nothing. I stand right. under nothing. Article 61 of Magna Carta. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the constitution so of this land. Place. We're in a public place, we can be here, we don't have to answer your questions, and no one's obstructing you or the buses. What are you going to do, arrest everyone for an obstruction? Did, did I ask you? Have you got enough cells questions. and officers? No one's doing anything wrong. You're here to do a job, to uphold the common law of the land and to stop a breach of the peace. There's no breach of the peace. How peaceful is this gathering? How peaceful and well behaved is everyone today? Brilliantly. Your presence even even isn't needed. You should be standing out the way. There's no disorder. There's no lost armor, is it? So why are you? Here? Oh, 
than to promote the people and serve your masters. You're serving paedophiles and Zionists, you are. Well, they asked you how long you were going to be here. It's none of your business how long you're going to be, though, is it? Thank you. When you give us the future, when you give us the future, that's how long we'll be here for. When you do what we want, you're going to die the rest. Go ahead. Hi. Um, yeah. During your speech, you made a lot of references to Jewish people as well as certain people in your audience, not Jewish people in general, but certain people, especially in your audience, to Nazis. Now, that is extremely offensive when certain people are German. And they're also extremely offensive to people who have actually suffered under Nazi rule. I don't respect that anymore. I really don't. I don't like and I don't respect the crocodile tears to con to the crocodile tears. No, uh, I'm so, folks. Uh, allow me to finish and allow me to allow me to finish. Listen, sir. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Uh, sir, sir. I don't like to play. I don't like to play the foreign audience, the Holocaust card. But since now I feel, com now I feel compelled to, my late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother, please shut up. My late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother was in my diamond concentration camp. Every single member of my family, on my father's side, on my father's side, the Jews did not take orders against the my Germans. My late father was in Auschwitz concentration camp. My late mother was in Maidan concentration camp. Every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. Both of my parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And it's it precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings that I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture the brutalization, the dem demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what she does. Why? I just found the audience. I've never been in a crowd like this. They're nuts.